Welcome to the second video of the Maritime Business Game. In this game I will introduce a main concept which will underlie all your work in the Maritime Business Game itself, the voyage calculation. There are a number of different types of contracts, a voyage charter, a contract of freightment, a time charter and a bareboat charter. The bareboat charter is not available within the Maritime Business Game, but the first three, the voyage, the contract of freightment and the time charter are. Each contract is slightly different and is best explained by showing you the differences based on the voyage expenses, the operational expenses and the capital expenses. The voyage charter is the most simple contract. It is a contract for one trip for the vessel from port A to B for a certain size of cargo. This means that the owner of the vessel for this contract will pay the voyage expenses, the operational expenses as well as the capital expenses. A contract of a freightment is basically the same contract However, this time it's not for one trip from port A to port B for a certain size of cargo, but it's for multiple trips within the period of one year. These trips are spread out over the year with a fixed interval, so it could be every eight weeks going from port A to port B with the same amount of cargo. The costs, of course, are still the same and they are carried all by the owner. In a time charter contract, the owner lends out its ship to another owner, who will then determine where the ship will go. So it makes sense that in this case, the time charter, the owner is only responsible for the capital expenses and the operational expenses, but not for the cost of the trip itself, because he has no influence on that. This will be going to the charter. Finally, the bareboat charter is basically the lease construction. So only the capital expenses are borne by the owner, and he is then chartering out this vessel to another owner who will take care of the crewing and all the other costs as well as sailing the vessel to ports. Please remember that these contracts can be stacked. So a bareboard charter, or an owner can bareboard charter his vessel to another owner who it will then put it on a shorter time charter to the next owner who will then use it for a contract of freightment or multiple contract of freightment. The capital expenses consist of all the financial costs, which is in this game interest and depreciation, plus hedging cost if you do uh, a fixed interest. The amortization is also considered a capital expense, and it consists of the write-off of an intangible assets, which you could consider such as a copyright. Uh, amortization, however, should not be mistaken with the other version of amortization, also in the English language, which is the payment of both interest and loan in a combined payment. This is a different type of amortization and has to do with loan repayments and not with the financial expenses or the capital expenses of a ship. The operational expenses are all the expenses that you pay no matter what you do with the ship, but they are not financial expenses. So crew salaries, maintenance and repair, insurance, administration, all costs with a monthly recurring fee and that you have to pay if the vessel is sailing or not. Voyage expenses, then, are the costs that you pay when the vessel is sailing and only the costs that are caused by the sailing of the vessel. So fuel costs, port fees, canal dues, pilots, cargo handling costs. The port fees, pilots and cargo handling costs in the game are all combined into one fee. The canal dues, of course, are not combined in this fee because that will depend if you are sailing to the Panama or the Suez Canal. The fuel cost is an important aspect. Within the game, we use the Admiralty constant to determine the fuel consumption of your vessel. Because basically, there's a, it's a relation between the power required, the speed and the displacement of the vessel. Uh, and we can translate this further to the engine power and the engine power can be translated to consumption. So as a formula, we get the consumption is a factor unknown times speed to the third power times displacement to the power of two thirds. The power of two thirds in displacement basically translates the displacement, the volume of the vessel, to a area. And from physics it is known that the area is of course in line with the frictional resistance. The speed to the third power is then again in line with some form of moving uh, resistance. This formula will not help us determine the consumption at another speed. However, if we use this formula and divide it by the design situation, we can always calculate the consumption. So we don't need to know A, we can have the 
the, consum the consumption at the current speed by taking the consumption at the design speed and multiplying it by the fraction of the current speed divided by the design speed to the third power and by dividing the draft of the current design by the draft of the design speed to the towers of two thirds. It says draft here and not displacement. And though draft is in meters and displacement is in volume, the reason we can do this is that in the game it is assumed that the waterline area, so the area uh, that the ship has that crosses the waterline, that is kept constant. So only the draft is changing, and then the draft is the measure for the for, for the uh, is the measure for the displacement. So instead, it, uh, officially the formula would have said waterline area times t current, waterline area times t design to get the volume. And this is why we can uh, just use the draft, which is expressed with the word T. To give an example of these calculations, uh, we have the following setup. We have a fixed income for a voyage starter, which is $100,000. The voyage expenses are speed dependent. We've already taken out the port fees and the kennel fees of the $100,000 uh, income and the operational expenses are three and a half thousand a day and the capital expenses are 1500 a day so if we use this data we can see how many if uh, depending on the speed how many days we will take to finish the contract and how much income we will have this is done in the following graph in this graph you see the purple line and the purple line is the hundred thousand dollars income that will not matter how, how fast i will be going this i will get a hundred thousand then the next line to focus on is basically the dark blue line. The dark blue line is running linearly up from five to ten days, and it doubles in the five to ten days. This is the cost of this is the fixed cost. This is the combined cost of the financial cost and the operational expenses. So this is five thousand a day, three and a half thousand plus fifteen hundred. This means that in five days is uh, 25,000, and in 10 days it is 50,000. Then the next line to look at is the red line. The red line is sloping down. And this is the fuel cost. And this has a third power. So that means if I take half the fuel, uh, so basically taking twice as long, 10 days compared to five days, I will only use a one eighth of the fuel. However, because I will per day, however, because I'm taking twice the amount of days, this line is not a cubic slope, this is a quadratic slope, because I need to multiply the fuel per day times the number of days. And those have just doubled from 5 to 10. This is why you see that it goes from roughly 70,000 to about 17,500, 18,000, which is about a quarter of the, for the previous one. We can use the blue and the red line to calculate the total cost, which is done in the green line, and we can then use the difference between the green line and the purple line to come with a profit. And as you can see in this uh, overview, the light blue line is the profit, and it has its top around eight and a half days. It's not very clear to see, but it bends, it slopes down after that roughly. However, there's also another way to look at these costs, and this is what I will show in the next slide. In this slide, the same date is presented with the same color, but in this case, not the total cost, but the daily costs are included. This means that 100,000 in 5 days travel is 20,000 a day. But in 10 days travels is only 10,000 a day. It also changes the dark blue fixed cost line. The fixed costs are now 5,000 a day, no matter how long I travel. The red line of the fuel cost is now a, uh, is now a third power. So it goes from 14,000 to about 3,000, which is uh, one eighth of the, about 2,000, sorry, it's about one eighth of the cost that it has. And you see it sloping down. The green line is again the sum of the fixed cost and the fuel cost, and it's always lower than the, than the income. And the light blue line is still the difference between the income and the total cost, so the profit. But in this case, the profit is at its maximum, much earlier than the eight and a half days that we saw in the previous example, it could be as close, it will approximately be about seven days. So if we summarize this, if we, if we calculate it per trip, 
we use eight and a half days as the optimal time, which is equal to about 8.2 knots in this example. If we use a per day optimization, we come to seven days, which is about 10 knots. And then the question raises, which option is better? Well, to help you with that, it depends. It depends if you have a follow-up trip and another and another. Uh, do you have a deadline, a delivery, a pickup of a next cargo? And of course, most, most importantly, if there is enough fuel. Because if you go faster, you will use more fuel to sail the same distance. Uh, the only thing that can be said of this calculations is that if you calculate the per day speed, the per day optimal speed, if you go faster than this, you will always make a loss. But the per trip speed will be a much safer choice in that sense. And of course, if you have to wait after you arrive in the port, it may be even more, it's maybe even cheaper to go slower than that, so that you are finished just in time for your next trip uh, to spend even less fuel. Because the slower you go, the less fuel you will use every, every time for the same distance. Thank you for your attention.